like uh, 66 million of our fellow citizens, I was unable to get along to the march on Saturday. Um, I, I was watching uh, Stoke play Birmingham. Uh, but ha had, had, I, had I been there, uh, I would have wanted to ask a couple of questions at least um, to the uh, organisers, questions which it seems to me haven't been answered by many of the proponents of the People's Vote today, or if they have, uh, they've not always agreed with one another. Question one would have been, what is the question that's going to be put to the people? Um, sundry different uh, answers have been given to that, uh, but at the very least, before you ask for a People's Vote, you should uh, agree on what the question should be and what should be on the ballot paper. It's not much of a slogan to say, what do we want a people's vote? What's the question? Ask me later. Um, and secondly, I'd, I'd like an answer to the question, what's the difference between a people's vote and a referendum? I actually think this is quite an important question to ask, uh, uh, because um, if it is a referendum, let's say it's a referendum. My noble friend, Lord Adonis, who's disarmingly frank on these matters, sadly he's not in his place at the moment. I asked him that, said, what's the difference? He said, there isn't any difference, it's just spin. Uh, now, he may have been joking, but my word, he was spot on, wasn't he? Um, uh, I'm amazed that the table office agreed to have people's vote, capital P, capital V, um, put uh, down, it, 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 it's begging, the, it's, answering the, it's answering its own question, basically. A people's vote sounds a wondrous thing, even when it's a huge mistake, as I believe it to be. Now, so what are the arguments that people say why we should have a second referendum, which is what it is? Uh, they say, oh, people change their mind. Well, of course people change their minds. Um, uh, uh, but not every two years. Uh, we'd have referendums every two years on the subject. I, I voted to leave in 1975. Uh, I had to wait 41 years for the chance to um, uh, see my, my mind uh, uh, reflected in a vote. Uh, let's test the integrity of the People's Vote campaign. Would they agree to another referendum two years after the one that they're proposing? Let's check every couple of years, a never-ending. And the other argument they use, of course, is that a People's Vote uh, uh, would uh, end the divisions in the country. It would solve the problem uh, of apparently or uh, possibly uh, a frozen parliament. Well, it wouldn't do anything of the sort, of course. A people's vote would exacerbate the differences in the country. Yeah, yeah. Parliament is simply a reflection of the divisions in Parliament. And how patronising, I have to say, is the people's vote campaign. It's effectively saying, particularly to those of us in the Midlands and the North, who voted so heavily to leave, you got it wrong last time. Unlike us Remainers, you didn't understand the issues properly. In the finest traditions of democracy EU style, if you get it wrong, you must keep voting until you get it right, as they know well enough in Ireland and Denmark. Now, I have to say this, and if I said, was saying nothing else to this House, I'd be saying just this sentence. I have to say that democracy is threatened when people with power say to those without, we know what's good for you better than you know yourselves. And I've heard that on numerous uh, contributions to this debate today. Because the truth is, my lords, that the so-called people's vote is not an isolated event. It's part of an unremitting campaign to reverse the result, which started the day after the 2016 referendum. The aim has been to delay, discredit or reverse the referendum results. It started with the argument, which you've almost forgotten now, which said, oh, the referendum doesn't really matter, it was only advisory. Don't bother about advisory. If the government wants to do something else, it can please itself. I, I'd love to know whether this people's vote's going to be advisory. I've got a sense from listening to people, it's pretty mandatory, actually. They say it would be the last vote, it'd be the last referendum we had uh, as far as the people's vote campaign are concerned. And then we were told that the Leave campaign was invalid and probably needed police investigation because too much money was spent. No mention of the £9 million that the government spent, which I helped to pay for, uh, which I deeply resent, I might say. And by the way, what about the money that's paying for the people's vote? Seems a wonderfully wealthy organisation by the adverts. Uh, do we see the accounts? Perhaps, uh, perhaps that could be answered at some stage. And then it was the Russians who tricked us all into voting leave, uh, apart, of course, from the much cleverer Remainers who could see through all this. Uh, so now it's the last throw of the dice. Let's have a second referendum to reverse the result of the first one. Now, I say, as a lifelong Stoke City supporter, it would be wonderful if whenever we lost a match, we could demand an instant replay. 
And I say to the irre irreconcilable hardline Remainers in this, and there's no polite way of putting this, uh, you lost, get over it. So surely the responsibility of us as parliamentarians, particularly in this unelected House, is to say that we were the ones who asked the people uh, to vote. Uh, it was our job, it's now our job to respect and implement the results. Unless we want the gap between people and Parliament to get even wider than it is at present, our job is to facilitate leaving the European Union and to do it quickly. My Lords, uh, it's a pleasure to follow Lord Grocott and Lord Shinquin, and also refreshing because I think we've had 30 consecutive speeches in favour of a further referendum and we've finished with uh, two powerful ones from them. My Lords, I do not relish the prospect of a further referendum. I agree with Lord Lamont and others who think it would be horribly divisive, but I do not think that that can be a sufficient reason in a matter of this importance to funk it. I think that we have got to face up to the need for it. I have always believed that the British people should be able to make as informed a decision as possible on this